This message is brought to you by danmolerarchive.com, the number one place to search over 2,500 Dan Moeller messages and growing. Now, please enjoy this message. One more question. Who's got a good one? I'll go, go with it, man. Okay, no, that's great. Did you hear? He said, you talked about becoming a new creation and, and being transformed, and you do that by the renewing of your mind. He said, what's some of the elements of that? How do you, okay, How, where do you get new thoughts from new life? You have to look at God, look at the life of Jesus. Here's the deal, and this is just flat out true. He's not just our suffering Savior. He's our model for life. He didn't say, sing to me and pray to me when you're overwhelmed. He said, follow me. If you couldn't follow him by the power of the Holy Spirit, he wouldn't invite you. Come on. He said, follow me. He said, the things I do, you shall do if you believe. So if you were the enemy, what would you attack? The belief system of the body of Christ. No wonder we fight tooth and nail over theology. You can fight the rest of your life over theology and miss everyday purpose. You can get caught up in post-trib, mid-trib, pre-trib, and you can set up a camp and teach on end times for the rest of your life. What do you think you're going to do when Jesus comes in that day? We're all heading up in the clouds and you yell across, I told you so. (laughs) Come on, man. You can get so caught up in a doctrine that you actually miss everyday purpose. You can get so issue-oriented you miss everyday purpose. His question is, what's some of the elements of renewing my mind? I find truth through Jesus. Truth is a person. Holy Spirit is the spirit of very personal to me. Paul talks about co-union and communion with Holy Spirit. Guys, he's not a breeze. He's not a dove. He's not a wind. He's not a goose bump. He's not a chill bump. And he's not make-believe. He's God the Holy Spirit. And he's my best friend. And honestly... I'm not trying to freak you out. We talk all the time. Jesus said he won't speak that which, that he won't speak on his own. He'll speak that which he hears. That means he's speaking. Holy Spirit will not speak on his own, but that which he hears. That means he's speaking and my sheep hear my voice. This thing is not complicated. It's not audible. It's in my heart. I've only had a couple experiences, and I still don't think it was audible. It just seemed like it because it was overwhelming. Most of the time, God just speaks to me through his word, through impressions. I'll ask him questions, and two hours later, when I'm not even thinking about it, oh, yeah, it's like, God, that's so awesome. But, but some elements of a transformation through renewing of your mind. He's the way, not a way. He's the truth, and he's the life. So he's the way back to the Father, and no one comes to the Father. He's the way back to the Father. He's the truth about the Father, and he's come to bring the life of the Father. Do you get it? We make Jesus the way to heaven. He said he's the way back to the Father. Yeah? One is a spiritual position. Other one is intimacy and relationship. It's amazing how we gravitate to position and don't gravitate to relationship. Holy Spirit's my friend. He lives inside of me because he wants to. Yeah. So I find truth through him. I'm renewed in the spirit of my mind. Ephesians 4 says, I don't live from the place I used to live like the Gentiles live. That doesn't make me high-minded, self-righteous, or holier than thou. It means I have a different reason for being and a brand new motive. Watch. You and I all woke up for ourselves without even thinking about it. After we're saved, some of us continue to do that for the rest of our Christian lives. Here's an element. All of a sudden, the gospel teaches me I love not my own life unto death. My life's not my own. Now I wake up for a whole different reason. I have a different reason for being. I wake up to shine. I wake up to love. I wake up for his image. I wake up to be one with him. And all of a sudden, I establish that in prayer. Father, thank you for this honor. Thank you for this prayer. God, I appreciate the grace. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, my life becomes something without me trying to pull it off. Because I believe it. And I give myself to it in prayer. That's how you get renewed in the spirit 
of your mind. Isn't that neat? In the spirit of your mind. Think of the spirit of a man, the inner part, that innermost dwelling, that deep place. Spirit of your mind, that central core place of function. Everything flows out of that place. So if God can take your motive and change it and the why behind your life and change it and bring it into truth, won't he change your life? I've said this for years. If he can change your perspective, he's already changing your life. Are you with me? That's why I teach stuff like this. If what you're thinking and believing and meditating on isn't producing life and encouragement in you, well, then you're thinking on a wrong track because he came to give you life and life more abundantly. If what you're believing is dulling your heart, bumming you out, graying you out, you're believing a lie. He is not telling you those things and they cannot be true. It's not what he paid for. Are you with me? So I, I look at Jesus in the word and I find what it looks like. He showed me what life looks like in the father. I look at how he responded to men. I look how he responded on the cross. I look at his love, his forgiveness, his heart. I think about this stuff, man. I think about he knew what they were thinking and still treated them like they were worth his death. <laughs> He knew Peter was betraying him. He knew Judas was selling him out. And he still poured into him every day. He still chose him. He still loved Peter. He still showed up on the shore after he rose from the dead and had the little fish cooking and said, hey. And the kid said, it's the Lord. And Peter jumped in and swam to shore. He's there. He's there. He, when he rose from the dead in John 20, Mary found him and, 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 and thought it was the gardener. And he said, Mary. And she went, oh, Rabboni. She starts running to him. In John 20, he said, he said, he said, Mary, Rabboni. She's running. He said, go tell my brethren. He didn't say, Go tell those low life backstabbing, say one thing, do another, no good for nothing. If you look at the word, they didn't do one thing right. They didn't do what they said. He said, you go tell my brethren. What's he doing? He's saying, I haven't changed my mind about anybody. I look at that stuff, my friend. And when I see it in him, I want it in me. And if I can't see it in him, why would I ever want it in me? If there's an attitude that I'm holding on to and I can't make it fit in God and make it work, why would I make it work in me? That's a real personal tool of my own that I actually use just to answer your question. Can I pray over you guys? And we'll close. We'll be done. We're done. We've been here long enough sitting. In. But I appreciate your questions and thanks for letting me go on and on and on. Tonight we're going to have fun. We're going to baptize Miss Esther. If anybody wants to get baptized, and I won't hold you under till the bubbles stop. But I will sure think about it and be tempted to know. <laughs> it's really important. Water baptism is amazing. Jesus said, believe and be baptized and you shall be saved. People then get legalistic and say, well, you ain't saved by the baptism. You, you say, they say, well, you're saved by the blood. You know, it ain't baptism that saves you. Well, the word saved means healed, delivered, protected, preserved, made whole, and kept safe and sound. He's not talking about going to heaven. He's talking about getting redemption in your life. Mind, will, emotions. Watch what Peter, 1 Peter 3 says. It says, it says about, talks about in the days of Noah. And it says eight righteous souls were saved through water. Eight righteous souls were saved through water. He's talking about Noah and his family. And he said, we have an anti-type. That now saves us. Water baptism. Well I thought it was the blood. It is. Well, water baptism is right there. Because he said not the cleansing of your flesh. But the answer of a good conscience toward God. Why did he bring up Noah? Why did he say in the days of Noah. And we have an anti-type. What he's saying is the flood. Was pointing to covenant baptism. Because when the earth was completely full of unrighteousness and men were continually wicked in their hearts, what happened? The flood came and what happened? We think flood, guess what God did? He baptized the earth in water. The whole earth went underwater. And when the earth came out of the water, there was no unrighteousness except eight righteous souls that came through water. 
God looked and saw that every unrighteous man had died. And he said, I'll never destroy the earth this way again. Put a rainbow in the sky as a sign of covenant and promise. What's he pointing to? The day men would get baptized in water and they would die to who they were and come out of it righteous. The unrighteousness would be removed, but the person would come alive. In that baptism, every man unrighteous died and the only thing remaining through water was righteous. So when Esther comes out of the water, it's a sign of righteousness through Jesus Christ, the blood speaking better things. She's not who she's been, she's who she's become through him. It's so powerful. So we have this antitype, which now saves us water baptism. So guess what we do? We fight over theology. Well, is it Father, Son, Holy Spirit, or is it just the name of Jesus? Well, if you didn't get baptized in the name of Jesus, then you ain't even saved, brother. Well, it's not just a uh, baptism. You can be sprinkled. Well, I was sprinkled as a baby. Well, how dare you get baptized and baptize my child? I baptized them when they were six months old. That's what we do. And we turn something beautiful into a war of preference and get offended because we haven't died to ourselves. And we prove it again and again and again when we argue like that and reveal that we don't understand truth. How's that for straight talk? I was on the basketball court with my children playing basketball and I was saved for two years. My kids are enjoying a brand new daddy. I'm down at the park playing with my kids and they love it. And a guy pulled in the car, come over across the court and I seen him coming. I thought, man, is that somebody I know? I was just ready to stop. I was just stepping into pastoring, I think. And he come across the court and I said, hey, bud. He said, hey, ma'am. So I just want you to take the time when you get a chance to just read this. I looked down. It was a Christian track. I said, oh, my goodness. Thank you, bud. Bless you, man. You pulled in your car to come over and hand me this? He said, it's important. I said, it sure is. And I appreciate you doing that, man. I said, listen, about two years ago, man, God absolutely saved me and changed my life. It was amazing. He said, oh, he did. He didn't say, wow, praise the Lord. He said, oh, he did, huh? I said, yeah. He said, were you water baptized? Well, I said, I actually don't really tell nobody this because I wasn't even sure if they'd think it was legal, but I baptized myself. He said, you what? I said, I baptized myself. I said, it was so intimate and so powerful. It was so from the heart and the Holy Spirit was right there. And he said, did you baptize yourself in the name of the Father? Son, and Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. I said, honestly, sir, I don't even remember that part. I just know I gave my life to him, went under the water, and when I came up, he held me, and it was crazy good. He said, actually, sir, you're not saved. Oh. Now, you tell me that's not tragic. I said, friend, I told you you're doing a good thing. Thanks for stopping. You're doing a terrible thing. I hope you never hand another one of these out to another person until you change your heart. I said, you ask my children if I'm saved. You ask them if I'm a different man. You're hung up on a theological disagreement and you're making your theology Lord. And you can't even see the light of Christ in my eyes because you don't agree with my doctrine. Shame on you, sir. I hope you never hand a track out to another human being. And I turned and we started playing basketball. And I wasn't mad at him and I wasn't setting him straight. It was just about six months ago, I was coming through an airport and I cut through, the pastor had me really late and I told him we better get going. He said, we're fine. And I said, I'd rather get over to the airport, sir. <laughs> so then we got behind a little fender bender. Next thing you know, I'm running to my gate. And I thought, why isn't anybody going through these pillars? It's such a shortcut. Why are they going? So when I cut through the pillars, I'm automatically on a red carpet. I looked, here's a big sign, Jesus saves. There's a man and a woman standing there with a bunch of pamphlets. I'm not being cynical, mean. I'm not trying to be nasty. I looked at them, and so I'm just a joyous fella. I can't help but to be okay. I'm having a good day. I'm gonna. I looked at them, and I said, hey, guys, that's amazing. I was wondering why nobody was cutting through here. I said, they're going out around you, ain't they? I said, bless your hearts. I said, look, I'm in a hurry. I'd love to talk to you, but I might miss my flight. I got to run. I said, bless you for what you're doing. But I'm looking at them, and my first thought was, oh, dear Jesus, I'm not being mean. I'm not being judgmental. I just looked. He's as stoic and straight-faced. He looks unapproachable. 
and she looks like she's in deep depression and medicated. I mean, bad. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I felt like they needed prayer. And I'm just being me, hey, and I said, actually, this is amazing what you're doing. Just get the word out, guys. I said, I'm just coming from a church. I was about 45 minutes out. I said, I'm preaching Jesus all weekend. I said, man, God bless you. I got to run. They, she said, you were preaching. And I said, yes, ma'am. I said, I preach every weekend. I travel somewhere 45 weekends a year, man. I'm just proclaiming the good news and preaching the gospel. What were you preaching? I said, well, ma'am, I can't hardly debrief that right now and go over that. I said, I got to get to my flight. But I said, I'm just preaching Jesus, how we're new creations. His life's in us. We're called to shine. We're called to have impact. We're called to walk in love. The man said, do you believe you can lose your salvation? And I'm like, oh, dear Jesus, now I see what I walked right into the middle of. And I was just tempted to miss my flight. <laughs> And I said, listen, man, wow, now I see what's going on. When I tell you I'm preaching, you can't even rejoice with me because you're hung up in a theological tangent, guys. I just talk straight. I said, man, I said, listen, I don't, I, there's no way to get into it with you. You got your mindset. I said, I, I believe a man can walk away from the Lord. I don't know why he would. I can't imagine it. But when I read scripture, I believe you can walk away from the Lord. I don't believe the Lord ever changes, but I believe a man can walk away. Oh, so you don't have salvation, you have probation. He was just waiting for my answer so he'd hit me with his punchline. And I said, wow, look guys, I'm sorry. I don't even have time for this. This is tragedy to me. You're gonna make me cry. I'm gonna cry. Like I thought you were doing a good thing, the Jesus safe thing. Guys, you need to tear it all down. Go get a grip. You don't look approachable. You look mad. You're talking to me mad. Honey, you look like you need ministry. You guys are not blessed. You're on a tangent. and You got to stop. You're hurting the gospel. That's how I talked to him. And he said, no, sir. You're walking around preaching and you're not even saved. I said, listen, I don't have time. I got to go. I said, man, I wish you'd really think about you need to get saved. Tears running down my face. See you guys. I headed to my plane crying. That's tough. Why would anybody want that? They don't. But why would anybody even think that that's real and true? So don't ever let that stuff happen to your heart. Don't get legalistic. Don't get religious. Don't get into works. Don't get so technical and miss the heart of God. Don't get so flighty that you miss the heart of God concerning your conduct. Oh, well, he just loves me anyway. That is not what I'm preaching. He loves you for what you're created to be. Yeah, I'm not preaching a grace that gives you permission to do whatever. I'm preaching a grace that transforms your life. And if you preach grace without transformation, you're preaching deception. Are you with me? Okay, now I'm done. I'm sorry. Had to tell a few sad stories, but they don't change truth. So Father, just thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you for empowering us. I just thank you for the seeds of this weekend and the heart in this room. I'm excited about these folks. I really am. I, I just love what I perceive. I love the teachability, the humility. I love the stretch, the challenge, the conviction. It's just a fun time. Have your way. Keep fathering us, Lord. Give us answers and wisdom in our seekings and searching and let our hearts see and let our hearts know. Come on, right now, if you're really searching for truth and you got that heart cry, Believe with me that grace will come, that God will give you understanding. Amen? It says, if anybody needs this man, just let him ask. Let him ask. Let him ask. Ask and it shall be given, right? So, Father, I ask for a grace of understanding. And I pray that the knowledge of the Son of God would come to our understanding in a revelation, not an intellect, a revelation. Let our hearts see and let our lives be changed by your love. In Jesus' name. Oh, uh-oh, let's do this. If you're married in this place, why don't you just squeeze the hand of your spouse if you're, if you're married. Just squeeze the hand of your spouse. Father, I pray for every marriage and I ask for the blessing of heaven to come upon every marriage, no matter where it's been, no matter where it was at up until this day. I pray that restoration and redemption come to every home. 
I pray that the ability to walk in love and see each other through your eyes dominates the home of every home represented here. And even if there's not a spouse represented, I pray this grace come on every marriage that's in this room. Father, I pray for it. I pray right now that you do an amazing work in our relationship and let love dominate our lives and, and, and just, just flow over onto our children and let the world be hungry for what they see in our lives. In Jesus' name, I pray for this kind of healing and redemption and restoration. Amen. Okay, I'm done, guys. I mean, I'm not. I'm just stopping because of time. But bless you if you want to come back. What? Seven? You can chat, hug somebody, make a friend. I got a call from Jay. Okay. Is he fine? Yeah. Good. So he's doing good. That thing went away? It's gone. Gone. Can you just hey, the young hey. boy we prayed hey, for hey, on hey, the phone. Hey, 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 listen, listen. You listen. just need to know the young boy we prayed for on the phone. He called Mama to let her know it all went away, and he's doing fine. Isn't that cool? That's really cool. That's so cool. So Mama stands there and cries because she's... If you enjoyed this message, please visit danmolerarchive.com to find over 2,500 more messages from Dan, all organized by category, playlist, and search. Enjoy. Enjoy.